Hello and welcome back. Sorry it's been a little while. I've had a bit of a hectic life right now. So, But anyways, I wanted to uh, put together this video because Bill Walzo has um, updated XSIM. I know a lot of you have found my channel because of XSIM. You've come here and found my tutorial and learned how to use the program and then eventually dug into my driver reviews and started adding files and designing speakers. And I just love that about this channel. I really appreciate that people are able to do that. So this update, it's pretty exciting. It's got, uh, it's now got DSP function and it's got uh, baffle controls as well. So you can look at uh, driver orientation and off axis response and things like that. And it's also got a way to manipulate FRD and ZMA files. So let's take a look at that right now. Okay, uh, XSIM has now been called XSIM 3D, and that's the new icon. So overall, the appearance of XSIM hasn't changed, but we have this new feature for DSP. So there's three new options to uh, put here. There's also the baffle, um, a baffle option, uh, so we can look at vertical and off-axis responses. <clears throat> so we have three options, uh, filter, PEQ, and op-amp. I'm not going to talk about op-amp today. I'm not sure how many people use that. I certainly don't, um, so I'm not going to get too into it. And it's a little different how this is laid out compared to how an active filter is actually laid out in the real world because it's laid out using the passive structure of XSIM and how it was originally laid out or designed. Um, so you kind of have to know what you're doing here. But in this case, I'm putting a PEQ in front of the system so everything can be adjusted overall and then a PEQ and a filter on each driver which is generally how most um, uh, DSP systems are arranged in my opinion and you can wire it up it, like I say it's kind of unintuitive it's it's like a, um, a passive system but loading files to the driver setting phase and all that stuff uh, delay offset Polarity inverting, uh, that's all done in the driver as it was before. There's no difference there. So I'm just uh, doing that now, getting the curve colors the way I like it. I'm taking off the system curve, so that's the overall output curve, because I'm just going to worry about that later with this PEQ box. For now, I'm going to worry about these boxes for the individual drivers, get the individual drivers right, and then I can look at the system response later. So here we have uh, the filter box. You can pick from uh, Butterworth bezel and uh, Linkwitz Riley as usual. You can pick uh, high pass, low high pass for a tweeter, low pass for a woofer, and band pass for a mid. In this case, I'm looking at the mid right now, or the the woofer right now. So I'm looking at a low pass. You can select the frequency and the filter order that the low pass is applied to. And there's also a gain and a delay box. So uh, for now, I'll leave the gain and delay at zero, and I'll worry about that later. But uh, this just gives you a feel on what you can do. Okay, same thing with the tweeter. You can uh, select uh, your filter type, your filter order and frequency, and uh, get things starting to dial in. So you can see the uh, response shape has started to take place. Uh, if you watch me change the value here, you'll see the the tweeter. Yep, so we got uh, 1500 hertz now. And the tweeter output is a little high, so I'm going to use the gain to bring that down. Again, this is exactly as you would see in a DSP uh, layout. I'm just going to adjust the scale and everything of uh, XM here so I can see this a little better. You can see the phase isn't quite right, so I'm going to just suggest uh, the low pass filter, try to get the phase to align a little better. And guys, uh, truth be told, I'm going at this uh, just organically here. I haven't worked out an active filter for these drivers, so I'm just bashing away. It's going to come out like crap, I'm sure. Here we have a PEQ uh, shelf, a high shelf and a low shelf, and you can set the frequency for that PEQ or shelf, uh, the, the quality of it, the Q value, and the um, amplitude. And on the right hand side, you can bypass it, so you can you can uh, make a selection and then bypass it or in, input it. So here I'm just uh, choosing a five kilohertz PEQ. This is basically for the woofer breakup, a Q of two and an amplitude of minus twelve. And then I'm going to sh high shelf this woofer to try and take care of the baffle step losses. 
Uh, so I'll do that. It doesn't need much because the filter itself is taking care of some of that as well. So I think I'll just settle on 1.5 dB here. And there is a gain and delay selector on this PEQ box as well. I think this is because if you needed those features but you weren't using a filter, um, but it seems redundant to me. And you can look at the biquads as well right there. So here um, we're looking at this and how it changes the response. Pay attention to the green line there. As I move the shelf, uh, you can see what happens. And there's the ampl amplitude changing how effective that shelf is. And that's about where I want it. You don't need the impedance window when you're looking at active filters. So anyways, uh, I'm going to just work on the tweeter here. Again, I'm just flying at this willy-nilly. So I'm going to just EQ that 10,000 hertz bump you can see there at the top of the tweeter. It's not going to need much, but I'm just going to take take out the, uh, the little bump there because with active, you can get really critical uh, and picky and do that kind of thing. With passive, I'd probably leave that in. Now, uh, you can see the dip peak combo right at like 3500 and 4500 hertz you got to be careful with this stuff even though with D dsp like with passive you probably wouldn't touch these but with dsp you can flatten this thing right out but the problem with that and i'm doing it anyways here i'm going to take the peak out because peaks are more obvious but with the dip especially this dip i know because of all my measurements it's related to diffraction so you got to be careful taking it out because as you move off axis it'll fill in Okay, here I'm just putting the uh, system response back into place. So that's the black line and taking it out. So that just is to see uh, where we're at. But we have a huge null because the phase is not right. So I'm going to use delay to bring the phase um, in alignment with the woofer. This is going to get ugly here. Um, you know, I'm, I'm just doing a hack job. <laughs> so I'm just going to quickly change some filters around and stuff and try to get things to work out could also just flip the polarity of the tweeter okay and keep adding a little bit of delay here try to get things in alignment this isn't looking too good I probably should try something else at this point but for the purpose of demonstration you get the idea here you add delay and um, things are coming into play here uh, we'll put the system back in and you can see we have a bit of a hump at the crossover point uh, so this is not a problem with uh, an active filter. You could uh, dial back the filters like this, a uh, different order or a different frequency, or you can go into the overall system PEQ box here and uh, take out that hump right at about, I'd say, 1500 hertz. So let's try that. We're going to take the amplitude down 2 or 3 dB. <clears throat> 1500 hertz is maybe a bit too high here. So let's try 14 ish hundred. Yeah, you can see how the, that bump in the response just bounced around as I changed the frequency. So, anyways, guys, I hope you're getting a bit of an idea of how these active filters can work, how they work in XSIM, and you can uh, make a lot of changes to your response. Here I'm going to just show you what active can do. I, you know, I mentioned that dip at 3500. I would normally not take this out, but you might as with active, you might as well listen to it and hear what it sounds like. So we're just going to use a high Q boost uh, right at 3500 hertz. And you can see how you can just take that dip out. You really can't do that with passive. I had a video about active versus passive, and a lot of people thought I was poo-pooing on uh, active versus passive passive you can see the difference there but I really wasn't so anyways uh, this is the next feature in XM this is the baffle uh, simulator so in here you can um, select uh, your microphone distance uh, so like you can basically back up the listener it's it's called the microphone distance but you know you can think about where your ears would be in so you could substitute that word microphone for ear basically so as you back it up, the response amplitude goes down, of course. Here we can put in our cabinet dimensions. Uh, I didn't mention, but this is these are the files for the Life S9 that I'm using here. So I'm just going to put in the dimensions of the Life S9. 
Uh, yeah, that's seven and a half. Whoops. Now, this doesn't affect the response of the drivers. It affects the interaction of the drivers. So uh, that's where the red bolded note comes from. So in here, I'm just going to put uh, the position of each driver. So the tweeter is just a little bit above the center axis in the y direction, but it's centered in the x position. And it's a one inch tweeter. And the woofer is just a little bit down of the center y position. And uh, the overall diameter is about four and a half inches. <clears throat> here we can put in some boundaries. So uh, there's a tick box there to suppress reflections. So that's to take this option on or off and you can do that for each boundary so I can put like at the desktop I'm sitting with the speakers only about eight inches off of, not the speaker itself but the the center of the speaker is about eight inches off of the desk um, and I've noticed a bit of a bug with the right wall reflection I think this is not taking the distance into consideration uh, I think it's duplicating what the left wall input is so I have, if you if you have a symmetrical room, you can use it because it'd be the same as the left. But if you don't, if it's non-symmetrical, maybe don't use the right. So you can see that little tick box where you can suppress everything, go back to anechoic, or you can add the uh, reflections by clicking on that. And you can take different reflections in and out if you're only interested in what the floor is doing or what the ceiling is doing or something like that. Overall, I don't find this feature all that useful. It does show me the low end gain I'm getting from the floor bounce, which is actually my desk bounce, I guess. But I find this very useful. You can uh, use the piston diameter of each driver to show you what the off-axis response is doing. And um, this is a different crossover than I measured for the Life S9. The crossover is slightly lower and steeper, so it's not exactly the same. But I've used this feature with the passive setup as well, um, and it matches really well. The results I'm getting really match my real-world results. So you can rely on this somewhat. Uh, it's not perfect, but you can rely on it. Uh, especially the vertical off-axis, I find this feature very useful to see um, the kind of null that is created at the crossover. So again, you can just move the tweeter a little further away from the woofer and you can see what happens to that null as you move off axis it's much more extreme because the spacing between the drivers is higher so that's where something like this is useful you can toy around and see how your baffle layout affects things um, and and see what result you should expect and then you go and measure it and you can do it uh, on multiple axes as well Okay, so the next uh, new option in XM 3D is the FRD ZMA manipulator, I guess. So here I'm just going to show you an example. I'm going to take that file from the SB Acoustics woofer used in the Life S5. And uh, we're just going to, you can you can adjust scale. I want to mention that. For some reason, the scale starts at 2 hertz. That's not very useful in my opinion. And then you can uh, do things like get minimum phase by you can add delay that's what we're gonna do here we're just gonna or add gain I should say you can add delay or in this case I want to um, use the Hilbert phase here you can see all the data available in the file that I've loaded once you're done adjusting everything the way you want it you can go ahead and save the file so that you have a new file to use uh, and keep your old data there and now the file is available to be shared to other people or uh, safe to use for yourself if it comes from an unknown source like me okay the other thing we can do if we're starting fresh and we don't load a file is we can actually create our own file by looking at say a manufacturer's data sheet or maybe a measurement of someone on the forum someplace and you can basically create that file by yourself it'll take some time uh, but you can manually input uh, the frequencies and the SPL. Uh, I wouldn't worry about phase because I would just then use Hilbert phase to get uh, minimum phase. But if you go along, you can uh, put in all the uh, data points, the frequency and SPL. Eventually, you'll come up with a file you can use. In this example here, I'm just hacking away and putting in data points willy nilly. Uh, they don't really make any sense. I'm not using this 
a specific data sheet or anything, and I'm not using very many data points for the sake of time. So just to give you an idea of what it looks like and what you get, but this should not be the level of detail you use to generate a file. Here I'm just choosing points that would mimic some kind of woofer breakup is all. Okay, then I would add minimum phase. Now phase have been, has been derived and I can save the file. You can also do it with impedance. I'll just quickly show you some data points as well for that same sample woofer. This is not a feature I can see myself using very much. There you go guys, I hope that was helpful. I'm really excited about these updates, especially the DSP. Uh, maybe we can go through an active speaker project together on this channel using XM now, uh, since this is available free to everyone. And if somehow you ended up here and haven't seen part one of the tutorial, please go check that out right here. And uh, while you're at it, check out some of the other videos on my channel, some of the driver reviews and things like that that could be helpful for using XM as well. Stick around and subscribe to my channel. I'm gonna be doing more driver testing and other cool projects. Uh, so if you're into DIY speakers, you're gonna to wanna to hang around to see that. Thanks for watching guys, catch you later.